the really nice thing about Kielder is it's such a big place with so many things to do that actually it's very difficult to see everything and do everything in a day. So we find a lot of people will either stay longer than that and uh, use the time to explore further or quite often they'll simply think well I've just got to come back to this place because it's so fantastic and I haven't managed to see all these other things that I can see uh, exist out there somewhere or other. So we do get a huge number of repeat visitors and also people that are staying kind of more than a day. Most people when they come to Kielder will probably access the landscape via one of the main either visitor centres uh, like Kielder Castle or uh, Leaplish Waterside Park. But when they get there they will find that there are certain things that are actually at the visitor centres like the play garden or the minus one maze. But a lot of them are accessed uh, via the Lakeside Way, which is a track that runs all the way around the lake. The Lakeside Way is a very good example of the way that we commission work, and uh, this track is, goes all the way around the lake, so it's uh, 27 miles in total. Of course, you don't have to go all the way around the lake when you're doing that. You might simply, you know, maybe walk uh, half a mile to Freya's cabin from Leaplish, so it's quite a nice walk and back again. If you want to go further, a lot of people will hire a mountain bike from the mountain bike hire centres in, in Kielder and decide to sort of take a, a bit more of a journey. So the, the visitor centres kind of form these sort of hubs that you start from, that where they have services and food and toilets and things like that, and then from there you can kind of access out into the landscape. Uh, and in the landscape, you find all this fantastic stuff that you can, uh, you know, you can play with, engage with, sit in, have an opinion about. It's just great. The Art and Architecture programme started in 1994. When it first started, it wasn't an Art and Architecture programme, it was a Sculpture in the Environment programme. So the idea was that uh, we would build sculptures in the environment uh, and it, they would provide opportunities for people to do something when they went for a walk at Kielder. So a bit like kind of decorative features in the landscape. But quite quickly that idea about uh, what the artwork was about uh, developed to become a more substantial part of both what the visitors experienced but telling them a bit about what the landscape was about. So it's not like interpretation, it's not like a sign that tells you what something is, is about or how it works. It's something that is a reflection on the landscape. It's an artist's response to the landscape. So a good example of that might be the wave chamber, which is on the belling. And when you get there, the artist has created a structure where it isolates a particular experience of Kielder, a particular experience that that artist uh, really liked, which was the way the light bounced off the water. And he's isolated it within this little chamber. And when you go in there, you see this projected on the floor. So the artwork itself is a sculpture, but actually it's also a sculpture that is engaging you very directly with Kielder, and that's a common thread right throughout the art at Kielder. It's, it's work that wouldn't happen somewhere else. It's always about something to do with the environment. Here on the North shoreline, about three miles from Kielder Castle down the Lakeside Way, we come across a hidden gem. This is where American artist Sim Park decided to site their forest head, or Silvus Capitalis. Silvus Capitalis was built in about two months in the winter of 2008. And you can see here that each part of it is built up of lots of different blocks of wood, individually shaped. There's 3,000 different bits of wood here all made and glued together, so there's no metal involved in making this piece of work. It curves up over the top in a beautiful, elegant shape. When you look out through the eyes, you get a real sense of what it might have been like to be inside this head, inside somebody's thoughts as they looked out at that landscape as it changed over the years. 2,000 years ago, perhaps some Romans walked by. 100 years ago, the forest came, and only 30 years ago, the lake came. In the future, who knows what it will look like. Unlike some pieces of work that need to be pristine, the head needs to blend in. It needs to take on the colours of the forest, the mosses, the lichens, the kind of greyness of the forest, so that it feels like it's just been here forever.
here we are at kiel de castle visitor center behind me you can see minotaur maze which was designed by an architect and an artist working together nick coombe and shona kitchen worked to build this piece uh, that mimics both the castle behind us up on the hill and also the stone wall that surrounds the site uh, for the maze and here we are inside the maze and you can see at close hand the gabion construction here wire mesh that holds it all together and these angular windstone blocks that are holding uh, the whole wall structure together you can also see behind me the glass which has come out of old glass kilns and uh, when it comes out it's been heated up and cooled down heated up and cooled down so much that it comes out and it forms these strange kind of lumps of of green glass that is very very similar in their texture and shape of the windstone itself now the windstone as we can see uh, is a kind of bluish gray color in the sunlight but it goes very very dark when it's wet so it changes quite a lot this uh, the, the, this structure it can look quite brooding and, and menacing and then on a day like this it can look really very light and kind of and playful we wanted the maze to be not like a green sort of light country house kind of glowing thing we wanted it to feel a little bit dark and a little bit scary a little bit menacing but good fun at the same time so the designers were interested in producing a building that had all the features of a house well apart from its roof it had doors and windows and a staircase and corridors taken apart and reassembled in a way that would provide a, a, a variety of different entertaining uh, environments for people to walk through and of course right in the middle there's the central room with all the coloured glass in it. Here we are in the Kiel de Sky Space. This is a sculpture by the American artist James Turrell. The Kiel de Sky Space is a light sculpture. Basically its purpose is to allow people to look at light as a thing rather than things that light illuminates. And this structure allows us to see light as a thing in itself. The light comes in through an opening in the ceiling and as we can see it's projected on the wall behind me. The sky space consists of a circular room with an opening in the ceiling. The important thing about the sky space is that there's nothing in between you and the sky. You don't see it next to things, so you don't see it next to the hills or the trees. You see it as uh, an object in itself, and that means that it tends to look very close to you rather than far away. James Terrell is interested in the psychology of perception. So he's interested in the way our brains process colour and light and what we see. So this structure is designed to help us look at things in a very, very different way. In the daytime, the sky space is a contemplative space where people come to just look at the sky, look at the clouds moving past, look at the sun on the wall. People who visit here in the evening experience light as a very different thing in itself, something that you can touch, something that you can feel something very different than what's normally experienced. Robin and Freya are two cabins that sit on either side of the lake. This is Freya's cabin. It's on the south side of the lake, quite near Leaplish, and it looks across the lake to Robin's hut, which is about a mile away on the other side of the lake. They were designed by the architect Studio Weave and Freya's cabin here is a very special structure, a very complicated structure that's made a bit like a flower press. It's got 200 separate sections to it that represent the inside of a forest and foxgloves and golden tears on the outside of the building. And it's part of a fairy story that the architects wrote having visited Kielda for the first time. In the story that Studio Weave wrote about Freya and Robin, Freya, who lives on the south side of the lake, builds a very delicate and very beautiful building to entice Robin across the lake. She gathers things from the forest, like branches and leaves and foxgloves, and she puts them together to make, to make a rather beautiful cabin that we're sitting in now. When that doesn't work, she cries golden tears all over the outside of the building, which makes it shine like the sun, and that finally manages to get his attention. So eventually they meet and go off on their adventures. And what gets left behind are two structures, 
Freya's cabin where we're sitting now and Robin's hut on the other side of the lake. So here we are, waiting for Robin and Freya to return. But while we do that, perhaps you'd like to make up your own stories while you're sitting looking out over the wide expanse of Kielder Water in the distance. <laughs>